Hello and welcome to Smog Vlog. I'm Tony, this is Slack. Today we're going to be looking at the VT200 by H Cigar. Okay, so welcome back guys. Today, like I said, we're going to be looking at the VT200 by H Cigar, one of many many DNA 200 devices, some already on the market, some not on the market yet, but there are a shitload coming. Okay, so we're going to run through things like uh, actual operation of the device, we'll have an up close look at the button presses. Then we're going to look through some tech specs with you. Uh, we'll go through what we thought about actually using the device, you know, how it holds up to you know, what we've been doing with it. And then we'll take you through the eScribe software. Yeah, it won't be a complete look because this is not a review of the eScribe software, but we want to run through enough stuff so you can know what you can do with this device. Uh, as the you know, DNA 200 stuff is still fairly early, there's a lot of people who don't know what it can do, so yeah, we've got to cover that. Then we'll uh, look through some pros and cons of the device and also the DNA 200 chip with you. Yeah, and lastly we'll just sort of have a quick run through of a couple of the other devices that are out there at the moment and how they sort of weigh up against this. We don't have them to review, um, but you know, the chip's the same, it's the little things that make all the difference, so we'll just run through that. Okay, so we've already done our first impressions of this device, you know, I will just say that it, it is tiny, it is powerful, it is solid, I, I really like it, you know. Um, my initial impression of it of being this solid little powerful device has not changed with a lot of use you know I'm still very impressed with it let's give it a quick hit and run through some tech specs for you so the casing which is really solid uh, it's a good quality build uh, it's made out of aluminium aluminium for our uh, American cousins uh, it's got a 3S LiPo battery in which is 1300 mAh um, three cells, so uh, times that by three, 3,900. It does have a brass 510 connector, which is a bit of a downside, but we'll go into that later. These tech specs are based on the DNA 200 chip. Your output power can range from one watt up to the full 200 watts. Output voltage is from one volt right up to a max of nine volts. The output current is 50 amps, however the peak current is 55 amps. Temperature control resistance runs from 0 0.08 ohm up to 1 ohm. Whereas regular canthal resistance runs from 0 0.1 ohm up to 2 ohms. Temperature limit runs from 100 degrees C, which is 200 degrees Fahrenheit, up to 300 degrees C, which is 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Your input voltage is going to be from 9 volts to 12.6 volts and your input current is 0.5 amps through to 23 amps, however we don't recommend going that high. The unit's efficiency is rated at 97% which is pretty cool. Yeah and it's got a uh, 0.9 inch OLED screen. Okay so those are the tech specs for the VT200. Yeah obviously a lot of those are all based around the DNA200 chip from Evolve so a lot of the devices that use that chip will have the same tech specs but you know we needed to cover it because if you're looking at buying the device it's important you know what you're buying. Yeah. Let's take an up close look at the button pushes and day to day operation of the device. Okay, so operation of the buttons. If your unit's asleep, you just hit the go button to wake her up. Um, the screen sleep time is configurable in the eScribe software. When you've swapped out a tank, it's going to ask if you've got a new coil or an old coil, so you just choose which button you want. First thing you're going to need to know is that there's two locked modes. You have the regular locked mode and a power locked mode. To enter locked mode, you hit the go button five times, pretty standard there. Once you're in locked mode, you won't be able to fire the device or adjust the power. You know, it's a pretty standard feature there. Um, from locked mode, you get access to another couple of menus. What I should say is for the purpose of this video, I've actually switched around the orientation of the screen and the buttons. This is not how I usually use it, it's not how it comes. However, uh, down and up. Um, so the first mode you can get to from locked mode is stealth mode. You do that by pressing down and go. That will say normal mode, stealth mode. Um, 
in stealth mode the screen is off apart from error codes uh, and lock warnings. To get out of stealth mode again just hold down and uh, go that will so say normal mode, stealth mode etc and then you come out. The next mode from locked mode you can get into is to adjust the temperature. So if you press the down and up buttons at the same time for two seconds you get in to choose the temperature you want to set then you use down and up buttons uh, to choose your desired temperature and then hit go and you're good to go. The last mode you can get to from locked mode uh, is with go and up and that is the resistance lock mode so we'll just fire that up now uh, as you can see there's a little padlock appeared uh, next to the resistance uh, again to turn it off just press and hold and it's gone. Resistance lock is used when you're having issues with stability of your readings of your resistance. Now people have asked for this to be added as a feature because other manufacturers have it. Personally it's not something I'd use but it, it's there for you if you want it. So let's come out of uh, lock mode now with five clicks and then we're back to regular mode. Uh, it's asking me if I've got a new coil um, it's not a new coil so I'm going to say no. The second of the locked modes, power locked mode, uh, is accessed by holding up and down from unlocked mode for two seconds. Okay, now in power locked mode you are unable to adjust the power however you can still fire your unit. From power locked mode you'll be able to select your power profiles. So just double click up or down uh, and then you'll be able to cycle through your profiles. When you find the profile you want just simply press the go button. Want to change profile? Do it again. Within each profile you're able to make changes to the setting like temperature and wattage, however for the really advanced stuff you're going to need to use the eScribe software. That's all from us on location with the H-Cigar button pushes. Tony and Slack, back over to you in the studio. Now we're going to be moving across to protection and features. Yeah okay so I mean there's quite a bit of stuff in there, you've got uh, short circuit protection you know, which is pretty common with mods. Low battery protection. Yeah you've got uh, resistance checking obviously again it's a standard. <laughs> temp control, no, no shit. Temp control on a TC device, <laughs> Who no. <don't> like <laughs> um, and the last thing it's got which is pretty cool is cell by cell monitoring. So where it's a three cell battery if one of those cells goes a bit awry it's going to kill the power to your atomizer which is pretty cool. While we're talking about the batteries for the unit, let's have a quick bit on uh, battery safety because it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. I'm fucking well impressed with that. I'm not even a bit joking, it's fucking awesome. Okay, so I think the bit Tony's talking about being awesome is the built-in cell-by-cell charger. So what it does with the three cells, it, it monitors them independently and will adjust the charge speed to each cell so they peak at the same time. Peak. Ooh. Okay, the unit has a good strong battery housing with acceptable venting. Yeah, I mean, the battery venting's there, it's all over. Yeah, obviously where it contains the LiPo batteries, you know, they are really good batteries. A uh, lot stronger, a lot more powerful, but um, they're physically weaker, they're in soft cases, they're a little bit more volatile, so yeah, it's good to have it in a nice rugged case. The battery itself is changeable, the LiPo battery, although it's not hot swappable. You've got to unscrew the top and the bottom and there's a connector inside, which is good, but it's a bit of a faff. Yeah, I'm also not sure what it does to your warranty, but it, yeah, it's good to have the option to be able to do it. Okay, so it's got a built-in 1 amp charger um, and it can cover from 0.5 up to 23. We don't recommend going all the way up to 23, but it, it's brilliant that it will regulate yeah, you just chuck any charger in, Kindle charger or whatever, you know, 1.5 amp, something like that, that's ideal, yeah. Okay, so now we're going to be moving on to Evolve's eScribe software for the unit. Yeah, we're not going to run through everything it does, but it is important aspects of actually using this device to its sort of maximum potential. So yeah, we'll just cover off the main things you got to do on it. Okay, so we're going to take a quick look at the eScribe software for using it to control your HCigar VT200. Now, this is standard software that runs across all the DNA200s, 
Um, first thing I've done is installed it so it knows what device you've connected. Once you've done that, you can just fire up the software. As I've got my device connected, first thing it's going to do is pull down the information from the device uh, and load that in here. Um, when you're connected to the internet, you can also get information about your device. Uh, this will just come back, tell you when your board was programmed and what it is, etc. I'm just going to click off and go back to free up some real estate on the screen. This is just going to be a quick sort of walkthrough. We're not going to go into too much details. Uh, I just want to show you the sort of main things you'd be looking for. So the first tab here, this general tab, this is where you control your various profiles. So I've set up one here. Um, as you can see, I've got a custom picture in there. Um, I'm not going to go into details of how I did that, but black and white, certain pixels, and uh, just upload it. It's very simple. Um, you set your power profile that you want to use, whether it's a temperature controlled device. Uh, there's obviously a lot more options if you're using temperature control. Uh, this one doesn't. Uh, is my tugboat setup I use. Um, we've set up a temperature control one quickly. As you see, I'm not using a picture. You've given it a custom name. If you make changes in here, uh, let's just adjust this wattage pointlessly. Um, any changes you make are just in the software until you upload the settings to the device. And that's it, they're saved onto the device. So for the options of temperature control, um, you have the option of selecting your core material, your preheat power, your preheat punch they call it, which is your basic ramp up and, and how long uh, it takes to do that. This is really good because I found quite a lot of TC devices sort of very slow to get going. Uh, having the 200 watts of power uh, and the ability to customize its delivery it is really good. One of the other things you can do from this screen is view your atomizers uh, settings. So here it just shows what resistance we're running at and uh, just it's a good monitor. You can also lock your resistance. Uh, personally, not something I'm going to be getting into. Um, but if you have a need to do that because of like a, a dodgy resistance sort of reading, um, which you really wouldn't want to have. Um, hopefully, I'm never going to need this, but people use it. I'm sure they love it. So the next screen we've got over here is the theme screen. This is basically your pictures. Uh, it comes with a default welcome, but I've obviously edited that. And this is what you'll see when you wake the device up. You get the two welcome screens flash up quickly. You can customize the messages and yeah, etc. It also details the pixel requirements for your custom pictures. Okay, next tab we've got at the top is the screen tab. Uh, in here you can change the orientation of the display, you know, flip it over. Um, you can choose whether it's got the battery meter, stuff like that, arrange where stuff sits, with you know, what field sits in which position. You change your fade in, fade out, your, your idle time, etc. Um, Personally, I don't think I would change anything in here, but you know, if you want to, then you know, this is where you do it. The next screen up is the mod screen. Here it's got information about your battery. Uh, you can actually run a battery analyzer on it, which will basically drain your whole battery uh, and monitor its profile for you. Uh, you also limit your power for if you're running canthal wire as opposed to you know, nickel 200. Not Nichrome, that would be stupid. You also have the option to uh, swap your up and down buttons. So if you swapped your screen over on the other screen, you might also want to swap your buttons over. Both of those functions can only be done through this software. There's no menu shortcut on the device. If we come down to the bottom of the screen, you'll see that we've got a case analyzer button. This can be run to monitor the temperature of your actual device. Uh, it's a pretty cool feature, but not probably something you're going to use that often. The last tab is a research tab for if you're building yourself uh, and you want to do some quirky custom stuff. This is probably not something for the average user, but it's nice to have the option. The other really cool thing about this is the device monitor. 
So we're going to go into that now. This gives you everything, your voltage reading, your resistance reading, your power readings. It is just great. So you see the live view running across the top. Let's take a hit and see what happens. You can see the power delivery and the temperature control. Um, it's really good if you're sort of fine tuning your temperature control experience. Right, I'll just very quickly run you through creation of a new profile. So select a new tab and we're going to call this TC2. Uh, select the sort of power delivery you want. I don't know, let's just go low. We're going to go 60. Let's make it a nice cool vape. We want 150. No, no, no that's 166. Um, so power delivery down here i'm i'm actually happy with the default of the five but let's just drop it down for a bit of a softer punch we can load an image in uh here's some i made earlier i've got my name just in case i forget who i am uh that's it i'm happy with that let's upload that to the device that's going to take a moment once that's done uh, it will reset the device and we'll just need to quickly select it Okay, so I've selected it now, and we should be good to take a hit. It's asking if it's a new coil or the same coil. I'm going to say no, it is not a new coil. Go start up the device monitor. Give that a moment to load stuff in. Okay, we're about good to go. Let's give it a quick blast. So power delivery there wasn't actually um, doing the full 200 watts on the first one. However, the the sort of thermal warm up was about what I would expect. If not, a bit of a hot vape there. So that concludes our little run through of the software. Like I said, there's a ton of stuff you can do with this. Uh, there's loads of other stuff built into it. You've got built-in calculators and other stuff if you're building your own devices. Um, it's a really good bit of software, but this review isn't about that. It's just for using it on your device. So that's all from us. Slack and Tony, over to you back in the studio. Okay, thanks Tony. So, now we're going to go through some pros and cons of the device, rather than just giving you a, um, how we felt about using it, we'll, we'll actually detail some of the more glaring issues we've found in the short time that we've used it. And the good things too, but yeah, let's start with the cons though. Yeah. So, first up on the cons list, it's got fitted a 510 connector, a brass 510 connector at, at most, uh, and it it's not good. It's already start, starting to show wear, and um, we've only been using it for a, what, not even a week. Not even a week. I have been swapping. Like, where we've been testing the shit out of this, I, I've been swapping tanks. I don't know, probably twenty times a day, something ridiculous like that. I've been going from drippers to TC to non TC, just all over the shop. Uh, but I've been really gentle with it, and already it's silvering up a good. And, um, trying to fit Godzilla on it was a mission. Um, I'd be really gentle with that. It's difficult to see, and I didn't have the sort of confidence in the integrity of it. That said, the brass 510 connector is fitted well. If it wasn't brass, it would actually be a really, really good connector. It, it's nice, but it, it's brass. Why? <laughs> okay, the next con we found was the. The, the buttons use a, a rod to, to actually push directly onto the DNA chip. Yeah, that said, um, they work really well. They're, they're fairly solid. They don't rattle. Um, so, yeah, they are okay. It would have been nicer to see a bit more sort of fancy buttons. Battery life could be better. Yeah, so, I mean, the sort of standard design and what you get on the Evolve site is a 900 mile LiPo. Uh, this is a 1300 mile LiPo, which is, yeah, it's pretty decent uh, but there are other boxes out there already that have got the 1800 mile lipo i found the usage of this like uh, on non tc sort of got me about a day um, I, I would have liked more I, I find it sort of annoying having to charge it every day um, 
but at the same time with temperature control you do get a bit more battery life out of it so it's okay I would have liked to have seen more button placement let's talk about button placement yeah so the button placement is kind of weird I think the unit kind of doesn't know what it wants to be size wise so actually getting my hands in a comfy position to press the buttons like for the comfiest sort of most stable position I'm going to want to be holding it like that which is really weird because then you end up pressing it you, you can't see this but pressing it with the <laughs> inside of my knuckle basically to fire the device that's where the sort of hand grip fits and as a result if you want to hold it how the hand grip fits you have to have your finger in this hell awkward position um, yeah it, it could be doing with being a bit better I think I'll chime in here for those of you that think that it's just slack and his huge fucking hands because I've held it myself and <laughs> my <laughs> I've held it myself my, my hands are doing exactly the same as his. My, my finger is going over where the button is and I'm, I'm pushing it with sort of like past my, my pad on my finger. It feels weird or, or you bring your finger back but then that doesn't feel it's natural. Wants to cramp out. It yeah. really does. Yeah. So yeah, sort of taking it on from the button placement, the actual size of the unit, I, 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 it's kind of like a middle size. It's tiny, it is tiny, but when you look at the other, like you know, the TC40 watt from uh, E-Leaf, which is proper tiny, that's okay. But with this, where it's just that bit bigger, uh, my finger sort of wants to naturally sit underneath it, but that's uncomfortable because it's a bit too big for that. So I put it back in the other position, and it's a bit too small for that. Now this just might be because I do have giant hands, but you know. The size of the unit is good as the size of the unit, but in terms of actually holding it, it's just a bit awkward. Personally, I think I'd have liked the unit to be a bit bigger, uh, with a bigger battery inside mm. it. Or smaller if they could magic the same power out of it, and then I'd be just a happy boy. But I mean, we're nitpicking here. So yeah, there's been a lot of rumours about the warranty of this device. Now everyone says it's a six month warranty and then you look into it a bit more and you're like, oh great, actually it's a one year warranty which is pretty cool. However, yeah. looking into it a bit more, uh, it's one year on the chip I believe, however it's only a six month warranty on the casing, the battery isn't covered at all and I'm not sure if this shitty brass 510 connector is going to be covered. I imagine not. On the unit that, that Slack got delivered, we found that it's got one dead pixel. Well, it's not a showstopper because it's just, it, it is kind of in the middle of the screen, but you know, stuff going over the screen, you'll see it, you won't see it. It does point to a bit of a quality control issue at H Cigar if they're willing to let that through. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of catch 22. With an early device, you want to get as many out quickly as possible. Uh, but at the same time, when you're putting your early devices out and people are going to be reviewing them, you want to have good quality devices. So, yeah, mm. I mean, it's not a showstopper. It doesn't affect it at all. And it's you know being such a high res screen, you know, you, you only see it when you're up close. So just day to day, it doesn't affect it. But yeah, quality control issues maybe. Well, we're ragging on H Cigar. Um and imperfect imperfections in the build also found under the screen on the housing of the body had a scratch in in the actual metal itself and then got painted over which is a bit shit yeah again this is exactly the same argument with the dead pixel yeah. in the screen it doesn't affect performance at all it doesn't really notice but it does indicate that things could be done better um, it's a shame but again it's not a showstop you only notice it if you're looking fine details it doesn't bother me too much because I, I, I am pretty careless with my devices, you know. When I'm driving this sits in a thing full of coins next to me, you know. I, I'm not particularly precious with my stuff. So this is probably the right person for this unit to have come to, you know, and let a nice one go somewhere else. <laughs> but yeah, it, w it w would have been nicer to see a really highly polished unit. Now one of the things I'm really not sure about the device is you, you really have to read the manual. I fucking hate reading manuals. It's stupid. You should have, if you're going to have a manual, it just needs to be very clear and concise. A couple of button presses and that's it. The only people I've seen nail that are Tesla. Uh, this, every manual I've read from everyone, uh, always it's a sales spiel. 
And I don't need to see that because I've just bought the fucking device, which is why I'm trying to find out how to use it. A lot of the menu items aren't even accessible just through the unit. You're going to have to use software. The, um, the, the menu system, like Slack just said, I fucking hated. Why could HCGAR not include sort of like another button on there, a menu system? This power lock shit, it, it just does my head in. I, I don't like it at all. Loads of devices going back fucking ages have had menu systems where you can just go up and down, select this, select that. You can't even orientate the screen from the device itself. It's got to be done through a computer. It's shit. I mean, that's not really HCGAR's fault. That is the DNA 200 chip from Evolve. You know, that this is like the standard design. But it is a bit of a design fault. And if you're looking at buying a unit, it's something you have to bear in mind. And lastly, you can't turn it off. Yeah, I mean, the screen gets bored and disappears for a bit. You can lock it, but it's never off. Always watching. <laughs> Okay, so that's enough ragging on with all the cons. Let's go with some of the pros. Yeah, it's quite a lot of pros, I have to say. Overall, I really love this device. The first thing, I mean, the size of it, for the size it is, um, it packs so much punch. Yeah, it's really good. So credit to the DNA chip and the batteries HSCAR are using in it. It's really good for power delivery for the size. I love the, uh, the strong metal case to it as well. I didn't initially know that it was metal because whatever they've used to, to cover it in with the colours afterwards just makes it feel like, like Delrin plastic, I don't know. But yeah, it is metal. Uh, and that's fucking brilliant. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of confidence in this, like carrying about lipos. I, I, while I wouldn't want to, there is a fair chance I'm going to drop this. and I, I wouldn't be too worried about dropping it because this case feels really, really sturdy. I mean, it's brilliant. The venting for the device that we spoke about earlier, although we said, you know, good, adequate, it looks like it will do a brilliant, brilliant job of keeping the batteries vented. Yeah, so you've got vents up at the top here, got a couple at the bottom and then a whole ton on the very bottom there. You know, keep the chip cool, keep the uh, whole unit you know, at a good temperature and, and yeah, vented batteries. What about the hand grip? Yeah, so the hand grip, I really like the hand grip design. I think part of the problem is my hand being too big. Um, but actually having a hand grip design on there, um, th this follows on from the VT40 that HCGAR have done. It's the same sort of case. But to actually have that is really good. More devices should have it. I've noticed that a lot of devices coming out on the DNA 200 don't have it. They're sort of squared off or, or one size sort of, yeah, it's just, this is better. Having a hand grip is, yeah, yeah. handy. <laughs> and, well, not lastly, but styling. styling. Yeah, I, I, I love the styling of the VT200. So, the, you know, you've got this sort of, the silver lines going across. It's like an 80s bloody Walkman. It is brilliant. I, I It appeals to the kid in me, I think. Um, the blue, I, my ideal choice of colour would have been the blue, but couldn't get them for a couple of days yet, so I, I opted for the black. Um, yeah, I, it is cool, it is cool. Also, the uh, the silver line styling on there actually acts and helps you out as a bit of a grip, which is cool, so it's functional as well as fashionable. <laughs> and lastly, the uh, charge by USB, which is regulated, which I think is fucking fantastic. Unlike my smock which um, I recently found out was a piece of shit because it doesn't charge via USB. God damn it, smock. Yeah, Tony doesn't give a shit about battery safety, so uh, yeah, he just wants to charge everything via USB. We're going to cover all that in our sort of beginner's guide to vaping we're just sort of working on at the moment. But um, yeah, where the three cell LiPos are sort of charged independently and it adjusts the rate, it's absolutely brilliant. You're also not going to screw up one battery as a result charging them like this. Brilliant. As temperature control implementations go, I really like this. Um, having the software to be able to sort of profile it and you know, monitor what you're doing sort of actively, I find really good. I have had a few sort of wonky hits off it where it's been over temp and, uh, well certainly felt over temp, I haven't been monitoring it at the time. But generally, it, this is probably my favourite TC device I've used. I'm not a massive TC fan, I have to admit. I, I, 
I prefer just going with a lower wattage, keeping an eye on my juice levels uh, and drippers. You know, that, that's my sort of day-to-day -day thing. But, you know, I've been using the shit out of TC to test this and I am really impressed. Uh, it is definitely an improvement on previous incarnations of TC. I've got nothing else to add, I can only echo what Slack's saying. I haven't been massively impressed with temp control up till now as demonstrated in some of our other videos. But using this device they they seem to have nailed it. Yeah, particularly from a, a sort of cooler um you know re uh, resistance, you know, sort yeah. of temperature. Uh it works really, really well. You you don't get a hot hit, you don't get a dry hit. Okay, so there's a lot of other Evolve DNA 200 chipset devices coming out. Uh, we don't have any here to review, like I said. However, we've been sort of like comparing them online, tech specs, sort of other things. There's only a couple that are actually out here in the UK at the moment. Everything's due, you know, sort of in the next month or two. But I mean, this is a really, really good chipset. So there's going to be a shitload of devices coming. Uh, we're just going to run you through a few of them now. So first up on the other DNA devices, we've got the uh, Lost Vape Efusion DNA 200. Probably going to be around 120 quid mark. It's not out yet. Yeah, it's coming soon. Um, it's got the same button layout as you see on the H Cigar one. Uh, you know, sort of standard circuit design there. Uh, it's got quite a nice styling with a square design, um, which may or may not work out better to hold. My guess would be not. Uh, it, having got the sort of the, the archy grip on the H Cigar one, um, going to a square box, I, I can't see how that would be better. It's uh, also going to have uh, stainless steel 510 fitted, so... Yeah, that's a win there, yeah. definitely. But unfortunately it's still going to come with the same 1300 milliamp hour battery. Yeah, which is an acceptable battery. Um, but not the best. Okay, so next up you've got the VT Box 200 by Vapesig. Um, that's going to set you back around about £120 in the UK. It's already out, it was one of the first devices out in the UK. It's got an 1800mAh battery. Yeah, it's so a nice and powerful there. It's got quite a nice styling uh, on, on the unit itself with some really really big venting on the sides which you would want with an 1800 mile battery times three although it does have some build quality issues yeah so the 510 adapter certainly in the early ones i believe they're revising it if they haven't already but yeah the 510 adapter was glued in as a result uh, the glue got hot and came undone and everyone is unhappy tight bastards now, this is what happens when you rush to get your product to market first. Okay, so next up we've got the VaporShark DNA 200 with a pre-order price of 160 quid. Um, quite an unusual design. It has the screen on the bottom. Uh, for me, that mm. was the, when I saw that, that was a deal breaker. You know, I like drippers. You've got a 200 watt device, you know, like... While it's useful for temperature control, why not utilise that for drippers? I love drippers. So having the screen on the bottom it, it is just dumb. I, want, I was once chatting to a guy who uh, I made the mistake of asking him the time while he had coffee in his hand and uh, launched it everywhere. And it's going to be the same thing. If I had something with a screen on the bottom, I would check it. I would get my juice everywhere. So personally, I don't like that design. There are people out there who are going to love it because it, it, it will suit them, but that is not me. At least it's got a nice go button going for it. Yeah, the go button is pretty fancy. But only a 900 milliamp hour LiPo battery. Which is another deal breaker for me, because uh, the 1300, I, again, I find that acceptable. Anything below that, I'm not interested. Before summing up, Slack, how much, where from? Okay, so I paid 120 quid for it. I got a code off Planet of the Vapes, um, but I got it from Angel Fire Mods. Now, I paid for this all myself, but I am going to say Angel Fire Mods are freaking awesome. Really, really good service, really knowledgeable staff. Steve, really nice guy there. Certainly, if you're looking for this, it, they're a competitive price and really good service. I highly recommend them. But again, I'm not being paid to say this. This is, you know, 
as someone who buys stuff myself, I like to hear that other people get good service. So I'm just putting that message out there. Okay, so Tony, what what's your overall impression of this device? Yeah, a bit of a mixed bag for me. I, I love it, I also hate it. So, and I fucking hate Marmite as well. So, <laughs> I don't know where to go with this. I really don't. I Yes, I love it for what it is. It, it's a great mod. But everything with the software and all the peaks and troughs and, and setting this and setting that, I'm not one that uses sort of like orientating the screen that much, but if I don't have it, that's going to fuck me off to the back teeth as it does with this. Yeah, it's great. It's got so much going for it. Would I buy it? No, I wouldn't. Sorry. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, it the software is a pain, like not having access to all your menus easily is a pain, I, I do agree with that. Now while you can't access everything on the device, I really do love the uh, eScribe software. I, there's so much stuff, more than you would ever want, and having that takes it, in my opinion, above other devices, you know. Obviously not above other DNA 200 devices, they're all exactly the same. Um, but, you know, compared to like just a regular one, we only have menu buttons. So, it's kind of cool from that. I'm ultimately really happy with this device. It is really little, really powerful. It could have had better buttons, you know, something a bit more fancy rather than the sort of standard rod and push. But that said, they're really good. They're, they're nicely finished buttons that feel good to press. It could have had more battery life, but again, it's acceptable, you know, I'm, I'm going to get a day out of it easily, so, you know, that's fine. I really, really like the 80s Walkman styling of the device, you know, I'm not sure if that's what they went for, but that's certainly what they've channeled, and uh, the temperature control implementation of this Evolve DNA 200 chip is really, really good. It's my favourite TC I've tried yet, I've tried quite a few now. This could be the thing that turns me to be a full-time TC addict, so yeah, I love it. Uh, really happy with it. I think it's good value for money. Yeah, great. Okay guys, so there you have it, our review of the VT200 by H Cigar. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you think we're doing a good job. Yeah, and hit us up in the comments if you've got any experience with the device. Hi Jerry, I know you've got it. Um, let us know how you're getting on with it. If you sort of disagree with any of the things we said, you know, it's always good to have another opinion. That's why we did this with two people rather than just one. Most vaping channels, just one guy, and they'll either love something or hate something. Here, we had quite a good example where Tony didn't hate it, but definitely not a fan, whereas I freaking love it. So, you know, let us know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Anyway, thanks for watching Smog Vlog. Juicy. I've juiced on myself. <laughs> <laughs> See, always suck, never blow. <laughs> <laughs>
So, first up on the list of cons, it's uh, fitted with a brass 510 connect. No, it is. I'm just disagreeing with Sir. I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> bell end. I'm not on the bell end because when I'm doing something wrong, he fucking, you know, shakes his head at the fucking screen. <laughs> Nobber. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. 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 Really good implementation of temperature control. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't see what it said. I think it was, it was about as good as the ice thing. <laughs> see, there we go. Yeah, let's freestyle it a bit. Right, we freestyle it. <laughs> <laughs> Left-handed mixing. Never been very good. That's massively. Ramped <laughs> 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 up. <laughs> massively. massively. <laughs> But ultimately, what he's loving about this <laughs> Shut up. 